Hello and welcome to YMT 215 Logic Circuits. Today we are discussing a new chapter, Combination and Logic, where we discuss only the first part of it. The chapter is lengthy as usual. And today we will be discussing uh, how to compose logic circuits from truth tables or expressions and how to get expressions from truth table or circuits. So this is the idea in basic sense. What are we going to study? within this part, basic combination of logic circuits, Boolean expressions and truth tables, De Morgan's theorems. We uh, actually uh, have explained about De Morgan's theorems before, but today we will take them in logic circuits. And finally, we speak about standard forms, the two basic forms that we use in composing of logic circuits in general. All right. Now, uh, before we go ahead, let's just produce a few terminologies and re-explain about things we learned before in this course. We have something we call and or logic. And or means what? We studied the and gate and the or gate, and we said and is used for the logic or the Boolean multiplication or the Boolean product and for or. It's used for logical or Boolean uh, addition. How about if we have some uh, multiply terms or product of terms where ultimately they are added? In that case, we refer to those by sum of product. And this is a widely used concept in logic circuits. Why? It's easy to implement and we will see how. And we refer to it by and or. So we have an, uh, some anded terms then ultimately they are ORD. Let's just say in algebra, we multiply a few terms, then we add them. X times Y plus Z times Y plus something plus something. That's exactly the idea. We add some terms, then ultimately we OR all of them in one gate. All right. The concept itself is called sum of product or SOP. Remember it, we will need to use it a lot and or logic it's referred to by all right and it is realized by a number of n gates depending on the products that we are having in the expression and the final or gate to sum up or to or all the terms available or the sum or the products it's the, to sum up all the products that we have now if we are speaking about four terms here or not necessarily for, but for the time being, we have A, B, C, D. We may have more or less, it doesn't matter, but for an OR, a standard OR gate, we must have two inputs at least. And in that case, we need to fill up these two. It depends on what kind of input you have. Now, let's say for just simplicity, we have a sum of product SOP, A, B, OR, C, D. How can we create or how can we realize in logic circuits A, B? It's easy. A and B, A and B with an AND gate. The same goes to C, D, A and C, sorry, C and D. We uh, end these two terms. Then the output is summed. You see, the output here between these two is ORD or logically summed. And this is the sum of product. So we OR A, B, then C, D. We OR these terms and that's the total or the final output. When, it will, when this sum of product will be high, when either A, B is high, either this one is high or this one is high or both of them are high. So either one or both are high, then the output here will be high. So what we are going to look for Either one is high or both. All right, both of them are low. In that case, we are getting zero in the output. And that's why we say it's easy for us to analyze it or deal with it. And you may get this uh, rectangular form. Uh, you remember this is an OR gate greater than equal one. This is an AND gate. And these are the inputs coming to two AND gates. And then we have a standard OR gate with an output. Why am, why am I saying about this? I may bring it to, the, to your exam. So do not be surprised if you say such a thing. You should be uh, able to address it and analyze it. All right. 
Now, one thing I would like to say, if we are going to compose or if we have to compose a truth table for um, this circuit or this logic circuit, how many variables, how many possibilities do we have? How many variables do we have here? One, two, three, four, four variables, two to power four as we agreed, four variables, two possibilities, two, two, sorry, two, two input possibilities, not two possibilities, two input possibilities, zero or one. So A could be zero or one, B could be zero or one. So either way, then two to power four, four of these variables will compose to you all possibilities. This is why I refer to all possibilities of the output. Why? Because as a, as A, A may take either one or zero. Now look, here we have series of zeros and one. How do we compose it? I explained about it before, but I will repeat because it's composed of four variables. It's a bit more uh, different or it, it has a little bit a slight difference from the thing that we explained before. Four variables, then we start A, eight zeros, then eight ones. Why do we do that? So we cover all possible combinations. Take B, four zeros, four ones, four zeros, four ones, then C, two zeros, two ones, until you reach the end. The last one, D, will take zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, until you reach the end. This is the easiest way to cover all possibilities. If you want to start by eight ones, then eight zeros, it's up to you. But I usually start by zeros, then ones. It's, it's like a habit. It's up to you, totally up to you, if you want to start by uh, ones then zeros, ones then zeros, it's totally fine. It will give you all possibilities like that. Now, for the output, we are looking for either A, B high or C, D high. A, B, this is what we refer to A and B, we say directly A, B, is high only and only if both of them are high. Now, we need to look when both of them are high. Now, look here, only here this side. These four um, states here. All right. One, two, three, four. How about CD? Now, CD also should be high. And they are high when both of them are high. Now look, we have here, both of them are high. That means X is high. All right. How about here? Also high. So CD is high and X is high. The output X is the output. All right, how about here? Then AB is high, X is high, AB is high, high, AB is high, also X is high. How about AB is high, CD also is high? Well, either A and B or C and D should be high or both of them are high, it doesn't matter in that case because we are oring terms here, we are oring these terms. That means also output X will be high. All right, I hope you guys uh, caught the idea and uh, understood what, what we are trying to say. If not, no problem, don't worry. We will have a lot of examples summing up the whole idea within this chapter. It's just an introduction. All right. Um, take a practical example. Now we have already started uh, learning how to design and that's why starting from this week I'll give you uh, practical sessions where we will use Multisim or any other software. I personally will use Multisim. You can watch, try to get the Multisim and um, run the same uh, experiment along with me. All right, now look at this. Design a system for three tanks of a, chemi a chemical liquid gives an alarm when the level of two tanks drop, when any, sorry, when any two tanks, the level of any two tanks drops below a certain level. What does it mean? Now, let, let me explain to you. Let's say you have three tanks. Let's say you have a printer, a normal colored uh, printer with three tanks or maybe more, three colored tanks, of course, one black. Let's say we are ignoring black color now. We're just using the three color. And in that case, here we are referring to a chemical liquid, whatever it is. If it drops below a certain level, either two, any of the two, A or B, B or C, C or A, B or, so we said B or C, okay. A or B, A or C, B or C. So any of these two, not one, any of the two, combination of two, A or B, A or C, B or C, 
any of the combinations. If it drops below a certain level, then I have to get an alarm. All right, so any of the two at once. How can I guarantee that two at once will be low at the same time? Then I have to test both of them at the same time. Test them with what? I can use an end gate. An end gate will give me high if both are high at the same time, right? Or gate will give you if either is high or both. Now, I'm, we are not looking for that. We are looking for if the two at once, both of them at, at the same time, drop below a certain level, we can use an AND gate for that. Then that's extremely uh, practical. How do we realize it? Now, what you can do is a sensor here for A, sensor for B, sensor for C. Sensor will go high when the level goes down. We will learn how to do that later on, not now. But for the time being, you can just say we're going to use three sensors. They will be high, activated high, when the level of the liquid drops below a certain level. Good. Then we have the three inputs. These three inputs, how can we test each two together? We have to end each two uh, one time. One time, each two. Each two at one time. So A and B, look, we assign a gate for them. Then A and C, this is A, look, this is the cable of A. I have to end it with C, second gate. Then the third gate, we have B and C. So here we have A ended with C, gate one. No, sorry, A ended with B, gate one. A ended with C, gate two. B ended with C, gate 3. Now we covered all possibilities. If A and B drops below a certain level, gate 1 will kick in, it will give high. How about if A and C, gate 2 will kick in and will give high output. How about B and C, gate 3 will kick in and give a high output. In order for you to guarantee all possibilities, here you need to sum up these by a logic concept or an OR gate, a sum of terms. So the idea is like this. How can I express this in an expression or Boolean expression? A and B or A and C or B and C. So OR, 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 we have three OR sum of products. These are the products A and B, A and C, B and C. We sum them up and we get whatever low level indicator. Low level means the liquid is low level indicator. Of course, it will be high here as an output, but it indicates that the liquid is dropping in these tanks. This is a practical example for a design in the exam or the quiz. You should get used to it. It's not really hard. It's extremely easy. You just need to understand the concept only, nothing else. All right. An AND OR invert logic, we explain about the AND OR. AND OR means what? Sum of products, we explain about the sum of products. We have products, products in booty, and of course, A and B, C and D, etc. If we invert it, we may create another concept, which we call here product of sum, product of sum, pulse. So product of sum is exactly somehow the inversion of AND OR logic. So we take the complement of certain ended and ended and or terms or sum of products A and B or C and D. If we take the complementation of this, what happens? Now again, we, we just mentioned about the De Morgan theorem. We will explain about it in, in a few within a few slides or within this part actually. But before that, I'll just revise the idea. If we are having and the terms with the complementation, it will be the inversion of or the complement of their or separate or terms. If we have or terms, now look, let me take the pen. If we have or terms, okay, of course they are ended, but as one whole piece, you can call this one X and this one Y. So X, Y, X or Y all bar, it would be what? It will be simply X bar and Y bar. So what's X? A and B all bar and C and D all bar or not C and D. 
Again, apply the same concept. If we have and the terms with the inversion or the complementation, it would be or terms with their inversion separately. Again, the same concept. You can say this is x, y, now a, b. It will be not a or not b or a bar or not e bar. Sorry, not b bar. Sorry, not b. No, we don't say not b bar. It's not b or b bar. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, all and it because here we don't have any change. C and D, we do the same. It's complemented. It will be C bar or D bar. All right. This is the idea. This is the inversion of N or. We are oring the end of inverted terms here. We have end here somewhere, right? This is end of some or terms. Here we have what? Look at this. We have or of ended terms. Here we have and of ORD terms. Complementation doesn't really matter. We'll explain about it in a while. All right. So the concept applies in this case. If you want to take the uh, product of some terms, this is what we refer to by POSE, product of some terms, means you take the complementation of this, the complementation. That means you invert whatever the output here, and you will get the product of some terms. We use these two for a design and we will see how within our explanation we will refer to these two uh, the minimum terms and the maximum terms. Soon enough I'll explain about it now within this part. But for the time being just understand what I explained and hold your patience. All right. Uh, we can design also with uh, exclusive or x or or x nor exclusive nor. How do we design? Now, if you remember uh, in previous in the in previous chapter, we explained about uh, the exclusive or it's composed of a. It's ex uh, sorry. It is uh, composed of or the expression itself of an exclusive or is composed of two minimum two inputs. We don't have in traditional X or we don't have more than two terms. We don't have an X or traditional X or standard X or with three terms. We have only two inputs for the standard X or if you want to expand, you add another X or so you, you X or X with another input. Now, if we have a B, the term of X or says the output X is a or B, but sorry, a not B or not A and B. This is the output like this, exactly like this. This is the term A not B or not A and B. If you want to say A not B directly with no and, it's fine. It's totally fine. If you want to say A and not B or not A and B, that's also fine. If you want to use the short form, I usually try to use the short form A, not B, or not A, B directly. All right, how do we compose it now? Look, we have or terms. We have two terms here, A, not B, then not A and B. So we have only A and B. Not is just an inversion of A and B. So what are we going to do? We take A to the first AND gate. Here we have an AND gate, A and not B. And we, the second input will be the inversion of B, right? We invert B, we apply this in, inverter. So we have A and not B, okay? This is the output here, which is ORed with what? ORed with not A and B. So we have A here. We don't have to place A again. We can take from the same input A and invert it with B directly, we do the same. Here will be not A and B, or these two terms. That is the exclusive OR as an implementation by AND gate, NOT gate, OR gate. All right, so this is the idea. We have one gate for it. This is available, but if you want to build it from basic components like this, or if the question is telling you, compose, um, let's say from certain truth table or from certain expression compose uh, this or X or gate or this expression, you can use this one, it's fine. But if the question is specifically asking you, what is this? 
you should say it's an XOR gate. All right, XOR gate, as you remember, in the rectangular form or outline is A, B with a rectangle equals. Why? Because this checks for actually not equality. If it is equal, the output is zero. This similarity or inequality checks. All right. For the exclusive no re about this one, it's the inversion or the complementation of X or which takes us back to where we explained about this last uh, week. Just take the complementation of this. We have ANDED terms, sorry, ORD terms or sum of terms. So it will be ANDED terms with their complementation separately. Uh, this is wrong. This is wrong. It should be the complementation of individual. I have to fix this one. All right, I'll, I'll do that. But this is like, you have to cut it from here. It will be individual expressions ending together with the complementation or otherwise it will be not a and not b and not a and b all not so this is the idea i'll fix this one what will happen take the complementation the complementation again and the terms it would be or terms with their complementation separately not not b will be not not b will be b not a so not a or b and not not a will be a or not b so again this one is separate not all actually this is a mistake here i'll just fix this one it's a mistake i should have fixed it before i just paid attention to it no problem this one what it means we need just to clean this one up it will be the complementation of this individually like here and this one individually here so of course not a will remain not b will remain but with a complete not on top not for all of them separately because it's available here for all of them all right the implementation will be what not a not b okay not a not b or a b not a not b or a b that's also implemented by t not gates two and gates and one or gate all right also here we have two not not gates two and gates and one or gate but the combination is a bit different all right let's take an example of a design design a system for parity check parity check you remember we explained about it it, it is used for what it is used for checking if the sent data is correct or not based on the number of ones or the number of zeros now we check the number of ones so we will check either even parity or odd parity even parity means even number of ones odd parity means odd number of ones so we're going to use some system using or gate or or gates to add or to create uh, a parity check checker so a parity checker will allow us to check if the number of ones is equal to the one we used in the sender side well we can do that how if we calculate the number of ones and find that it is even and we send the even parity bit and at the receiver if we check it if it is even parity then most likely it is correct there is no error or maybe some two errors happened like two bits changed and in that case it's a bit hard to check with the system for the system is just simple to detect if there is a single error or not all right or odd number of errors and that's enough for us for the time being all right how can we use it well we can do like this at the sender side the sender means the wherever you are sending information to somewhere so the place that generates the data to be sent all right so what are we going to do we will xor all the data bits to get the parity bit the parity if we xor the data if the number of ones are even then the output will be zero why remember xor if we xor zero with zero that's zero one with one that's zero right so even number of zero of ones either zero ones or two ones that will get get you zero how about if ones if one one if we XOR 0 
XOR 1, the output is 1. If we XOR 1 and 0, the output is 1. So in the case of dissimilarity, we have 1, in, or in the case of equality, we have 0. In other words, this XOR gate will check for you the number of ones that you have in the input, if it is odd or even. If it is even, the output will be 0. If it is odd, the output will be 1. Now, we will XOR all the bits that we have at the uh, sender side. Then we will create the final bit will be the parity bit. It depends on the total number of ones, if it is even or odd. If we have five ones, the output will be one, then you will have six. If you have four ones, the output will be zero, because we have even number of ones, and so on. At the receiver side, what are you going to do? You will XOR all these bits again, and compare with the parity. Meaning what? Meaning, if you receive at the uh, receiver side four ones, you XOR of all of them, you will get zero. Zero XOR zero, the parity bit, that's also zero. Let's say you receive five ones and you are supposed to receive four ones. Then you will XOR all these ones, two at a time, two at a time, you will have one. One XOR zero will be simply one, and that will create an error. Now it's a, a bit tough. This is the explanation, theoretical explanation. Let me show you in a circuit. Now look, let's say we have data bits, four for simplicity, A0, A1, A2, A3. We use a subscript just to make the data bits uh, like um, unique, these unique bits based on their subscript. As I said, for the standard XOR gate, we use two inputs, then you can XOR later on. Meaning what? We have four, we can XOR the first T and the second T, then you XOR the output of these two. Now it depends. If here is zero, one, the output will be one. If one, if zero, one, also the output will be one. Otherwise, one, one, or zero, zero, the output will be zero. We explain this. All right. The output here, the final output here, will depend on the number of ones here. If it is odd, it will be one. If it is even, it will be zero. Okay? So we have our data bits and we have what we call here the even parity. Even parity means it's exactly counting the number of ones and that's what the XOR circuit here does. If you do not believe me, try. Let's try. Let's say this is zero, one, Let's give this one 1 and give this one 1. 0 x or 1, that's 1. 1 x or 1 is 0. Again, 1 x or 0 is 1. So, how many zeros? 3. Odd number of zeros, we got 1. Uh, odd number of 1s, sorry, not zeros. Odd number of 1s, we got 1. Let's apply this with zero here. Zero, x or zero is zero, okay? One x or one is zero. Zero x or zero is zero. All right, so what are we going to get? Zero. The number of ones, two, even. So in brief, again, if the number of ones here is odd, the output here would be one. If it is even, it would be zero. All right. So we have even parity, generator, and the data. Now for the transmission, usually we don't transmit the data in parallel. That's really costly. We transmit it in series or serial form. There will be a sort of trans, uh, conversion between parallel to serial. You don't have to study this. This is like a, another topic. We don't, we don't worry about it now. All right, so we, we send the data through a transmission medium. Whatever the transmission medium is, we are not going to study it. So when we receive it at the receiver side, we have our even parity bit, whatever we got from here, one or zero, depending on the number of ones, and we receive our data bits. Our data bits, or whatever comes from the transmission line, may have an error. 
This is possible. Having an error in the transmission is extremely possible. And for that, we have the uh, error detection. This is exactly the error detection. So we apply the same. We apply the same means what? We XOR all the data along with the parity. XORing the data means A0, XOR A1, A2, XOR A3, then whatever X and Y here, XOR them again. So X, X or Y, you will get whatever. If the number of ones here is odd, you will get one. If the number of ones here is, uh, is even, you will get zero. You will X or it with the even parity. Now look, let's assume here, zero, zero, one, one. So we got what? We got zero even parity. So here we assume that zero, zero, one, one. We assume that we received these data bits the way they are, right? The same, the way they are, no error. What will we get here? We are supposed to get zero, ultimately. If we get one, why? Because it's parity checker. If we get one, that means there is an error. Let's see, zero x or zero, that's zero. One x or one, that is zero. In case of similarity, in case of equality, zero. In case of dissimilarity or inequality, one. All right, zero x or zero is zero. Zero x or zero is also zero. No error. Let's say for some reason, this bit here is changed from zero to one. What does it mean, error? Error means a bit is changing from zero to one or a bit is changing from one to zero because we don't have any other. Either zero to one or one to zero. So this one is changed for one. An error happened due to some error. How? We don't have to study how. It's not necessarily for the time being. But for some reason, this bit is changed from zero to one. Zero x or one is one. Okay. Now one x or one is zero. Zero x or one or one x or zero is one. Zero x or one or one x or zero doesn't matter actually. Here associativity here doesn't matter. One x or zero is one. So it's not even parity. This is odd. And because it's odd, in that case, what we have is error. Alright, I hope you guys understand it. This is just the explanation of the whole system. I explained it, I mean, thoroughly by my own words on this system. Can you design it? You should be able to design the system. It's not really hard. And we will take even practical examples for such a thing. Let's move on. Now, we may have a Boolean expression. Can we convert... Uh, this boolean expression to a logic circuit? Yes, why not? Why? Now look at this. This is the output. All right. This is a term, sum, sorry, a product. Here we have a sum, then another product. So ultimately we have sum of products or SOP. So, so for this one, we have two terms which are ORed, and these terms are ANDed with their own variables. How many variables do I have here? A, B, C, D, E, five variables. All right, five variables. How many gates can I realize this expression? Now look, one AND gate for ANDing, A and B, and another, uh, sorry, another AND gate for C and D and E. And then one OR gate for summing up. All right, so two AND gates, two AND gates, and one OR gate. Now, uh, it is possible to have more than two inputs for an AND gate. It's not possible to have less than two. The minimum number of uh, inputs for an AND gate is exactly two, but it, more than that is possible means what? Means we can have more than two, that's possible three or four or five, that's practically possible and you can do it. So here what we have is A and B, then we have an, the other uh, and C and D and E, or you can directly say A, B, C, D, E. This refers to and. You need to OR these terms. We need one OR gate and 
and this is the minimum because we have two inputs we may have more than that it depends on the terms or terms we have only one or so these are two to be or so just two inputs and that's enough for you to have the minimum requirement for uh, an or gate x would be a b or c d e if we're going to uh, create using a bit more complicated term let's say a b and here we have parentheses c d bar or e f how many uh, variables do we have one t variable here means uh, we explain about the variable a b c whatever holds possibility here in this case as an input one t three four five six six variables right six variables six different variables two to power six if you want to take a truth a truth table that's extremely complicated but look at this if you want to build this one the way it is now we you have two ended terms another two ended terms another two ended terms now we have three and gates but remember that we have also an and here this one is ended so a and b is ended with all these so we need another end gate all right how about or gate we have only one or gate just one we don't have any other you look at this with the plus sign here we have only one or uh, we have not gate let's count again the end gates is determined here one a and b then this end this one here then again c and d another end e and f another end okay so we have two three four four end gates all right how about or we have only one and how about not we have only one how can we realize it's not really hard we have a b c d e f list them down on top of each other this is the easiest way then start doing the job a and b a and b okay then all ended with what c d bar or e f so we need to get c d bar invert d c and d bar e and f or them or them this is or then and all with a and b that is the output well it, it looks complicated but usually we get such questions not really hard this one you just need to arrange your ideas can we simplify this one yes how a and b and c and d bar means uh apply the concept of product logical product for this expression a and b distribute that means a and b and c and d bar or a and b and f e sorry and e and f like this it's just the distribution in this case we have just two or terms each with four inputs and that's much easier now less in terms of gates and it's easier in implementation we have two T and gates with four inputs A, B, C, D, A, B, E, F. Okay, one inverted D bar, and then the output is all ORD. We have two terms, we OR them. It's up to you if you want to design this way or design this way. If you want to put it in the sum of products, if the question is telling you put this one in the sum of products, you are forced to use this. This is the sum of products, SOP. All right okay let's move on how about if we have a truth table not an expression we have just a truth table and the question is telling us compose from this truth table um, the circuit so what you need to do is you need to design the circuit based on the truth table now for the truth table we have to use a certain method we have two methods I'll explain them after a while but before that I'll give you an idea let's just get the product terms from a truth table B product terms means what what makes the output high based on the sum of products sum of products means what now let's see if we have a b c if we have three inputs a b and c and in that case we will have to have 
uh, how many possibilities? 2 to 3, that's 8. So A will take 4, B will take 4 zeros, 4 ones. B will take two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones. C will take zero, one, zero, one, zero, uh, zero, one until the end. All right. Now the output depends. The output is totally up to either the truth table or the given function. That means I can determine when the output will be high unless I have certain given uh, info. Otherwise, it will be just provided to me. Like this table is provided to us. I didn't design it. It's just given. That means I have to design the circuit of this truth table. Okay. Why I'm saying this? Because some students get stuck. Like, how did he get 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0? How did he, from where did he get these? Well, I didn't get them. They are provided. So you don't have to worry about them. They are provided. If they were not provided, we have to give you something so that you get the truth table from. There must be some sort of information that allows you to construct through the, sorry, the truth table. Otherwise, you won't be able to construct it on your own. It will be given to you, provided to you. All right. So let's say we are given this truth table. And based on this truth table, you have to specify the states with the high x output. High means 1 or 2. Mark them, and when you mark them, you create the product terms. The product terms means what? Now, what makes this one high or 1? Now, look, the inputs A, B, C. A is inverted. Why inverted? If I end 0 with anything, is always 0. So, in order to, for me to avoid having 0, that makes the end, the output of end, 0, I have to complement it. If you complement 0, it will be 1, okay? And that will not disturb your output. So what I will say, I'll say, I'll not say uh, 0 bar, I'll say A bar or not A. Not A, B is uncomplemented and B, C is uncomplemented and C or not A, B, C directly. Take this one, A is un uncomplemented which is 1, okay, A the way it is, A, look at B is 0, complemented, C is also complemented, 0, so it's complemented, A and not B and not C, A and not B and not C. Again, for those who couldn't understand the idea, we check where the output is high, we mark it, then start taking the variables, the status of these variables here. So these states will determine what is the expression using the product term. We are speaking about the product term, okay? Sum of products. Okay? All right. So for the sum of product, we multiply all those to get us one. Zero, ignore it. You don't have to care. All zeros, don't look at them. Just ignore all zeros. You just look at what brings you one in the output. We have two states. Look at them, these two states. Now, if this is zero, put its variable complemented. If it is one, leave the variable the way it is. Now the variable is zero. The, sorry, the value is zero. The variable will be complemented or inverted. A bar B C. Now look at this. The value the value is not zero is one. The variable will be uncomplemented or the way it is true in its true form. A this one is zero. Complement is variable B bar. This one is zero. Complement is variable C bar. That's it. Then or these two because it's sum of products. So it will be A bar B C or a, B, bar, C, bar. That's it. You got it. So again, to arrange the ideas, if you are given a truth table, what you need to do, mark the high states, no matter where they are, and then get the products which get you these high outputs based on this formula. What gets you high here? 
Of course, we are speaking about product. That means ending. In ending, one and one is fine. There is no problem. But for us, if you end it with zero, it would be zero. So we complement this. A bar and B and C. Why I say A bar, this variable, this value belongs to this variable. Okay? That's what I did. Again, here one is fine, you don't have to complement anything. Zero, it belongs to B. I complement its variable, B bar. Zero belongs to C. I complement its variable, C bar. Sum them up, that's the output. So in this case here, we have only one OR gate, three NOT gates, Y, A inverted, B inverted, C inverted, three NOT gates, and two AND gates with three inputs. That's it like this a not a b not b c not b is sorry c not c so we have here not a b and c not a b this one i think because i cut the image so the not is gone i just provided it no problem not a and b and c now, one thing I, I would like to highlight, in, in logic circuits, in order for us to show the connectivity, we, pro, we put this dot, dark, bold dot. Otherwise, this is not connected, okay? This is not connected. It should be like bold dot. All right. The same thing goes here, not B and A and not C, or A and not B and not C, all ORD, and that's the output. All right. So we explain about it. Now, sometimes we are given uh, a truth table or maybe the question is telling us how to construct the truth table. How do I get it? The question will tell you. For example, the question will tell you, uh, let's say it is a voting system. A voting system means what? Let's say we have uh, three judges or a committee of three members. And if two say yes, then it is a yes. Okay. okay. Otherwise, it's no. How can we design a system for this? It's easy. You can consider yes and no as one and zero. And you can put how many members? Three members. These are three variables, A, B, C. How many possibilities do you have? Two to, two to three, two to power three. That means eight possibilities. You construct... A truth table with three variables, four zeros for the first variable, four ones, then two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones, then zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, until the end. If you have two ones, then the output will be one. Otherwise, it would be zero. I'll solve this one for you in the practical session, not now. But now, how, how do we construct a truth table? It depends on the number of variables. If you have two variables, that's two to two four possibilities, if three, two to three, and so on. All right, look at the truth table, the value of the expression or the, um, the function where we have the output, x or y or f, if you re uh, refer to it by f, and that will compose your truth table. That's how we compose it from truth table. We can create from this one, it's possible. All these ones we can use for our uh, sum of products. Now, this is a bit different why it's abbreviated. However, if you want to do this, uh, you will have A or B bar or C or, sorry, A, B bar, C, D or the next state, A, B, C bar, D bar or the third term a b c bar d the fourth term a b c d bar the fifth term a b c d well, this is easier how do we get it it's just an abbreviated output abbreviated based on what how do i know you may you may say okay how do i know based on why you get it now look it's easy why because here we have in the end two inputs. One of them will determine where we are. Now look at A, at this last part of A from here, starting from here, 
it's all ones until the end eight ones why because we have four members two to four that's 16 so 16 would be composed of eight zeros eight ones all right from here all ones so a will not change the end the other party will change other party is what b or c d well c d b is zeros until here will change for sure so we need to look for c d while c d also until here will also change to zero the end here and in that case what are we going to do we'll check here c d is one one here b is one because either this or these two and that's what it gets you it's too hard to deduce it this way it's too hard to conclude it this way that's why we study uh, the ex um, sorry the extraction of the output based on truth table and we will give you a way to abbreviate it it, it may come like five terms with the product uh, sum of products it would be really complicated uh, how can we abbreviate it or simplify it? We will learn something we call it um, the Carno map. Not today, not this uh, part, but we will learn it in the next part. Before we go there, uh, we have something to explain the De Morgan's theorems. I explain about De Morgan's theorems, but it is wise to always link it to the topic that we uh, discuss. Now, De Morgan's theorem, we have two, actually two theorems are actually two parts of a theorem related to the negation of terms either product terms or uh, uh, or terms so in that case what we, what we are looking for here is exactly either oring the negation or ending the negation and for this what we need now think about this the idea is like this uh, we need either complementation, we need to look into either the complementation of two ended terms or more than two and the terms in general or we need to look into the negation of all ORT terms. Okay? So for the first part of the theorem or the first theorem of De Morgan it says that the complement of product of product of variables, not necessarily two, is equal to the sum of the complements of the variables. All right. Means what? If we have complemented variables that are product, actually, so these are product x, y, they are product, and we have the complement here. So what we are, what are we going to have is exactly the complement of their or terms so we take their individual terms or variables and we or their complementation there is another way you stated the complement of two or more ended variables two or more ended variables is equivalent to the or of the complements of individual variables that's exactly how it is all right and the second theorem here in this case is telling us what is telling us um, the other way around. If we have OR terms and these terms are complemented, so what are we going to have is exactly the end of their individual complemented variables. Or let's just read its uh, statement. The complement of sum of variables, the complement of sum of variables, or variables is equal to the product of the complements the product of the complements of the variables themselves or in another way the complement of the two of two or more ORD variables is equivalent to the end of the complements of individual variables and that is how De Morgan's theorems can be stated and they have uh, actually a big part of our implementation in uh, boolean expressions now uh, how can we link two concepts to each other these concepts the NAND gate and the negative or we explain about this in the previous chapter however let me just remind you with the essence of uh, these two representations for a NAND gate is uh, a NOT gate which is negated 
So we negate x and y. We negate it. It will be x, y, all bar or not x and y. Okay. Right. This is equivalent to what? Equivalent to the negative or. Negative or means what? X bar or Y bar. How do I know? Apply the Morgan's theorem, the first one. The negation of and the terms will be the or or the or summation or sorry, the or neg neg negated terms individually. That means we negate these individual terms and we sum them up or we or them. All right. This is equal, equal, in this case, the output is equal, it's equivalent, okay? We don't say these are equal, we say the output is equal, but they are equivalent to each other, they produce the same output, in other words. Uh, how, how do we apply it to the second theorem? The second theorem of De Morgan says that the negation of or terms is exactly the ending of their individual or separate complementation or negation. That means the negation of x or y is equal to x bar and y bar. This is exactly what? It is either nor gate. Nor gate means what? The negation of x or y is negated. And here, negative n. Negative n is equivalent to the nor gate or the nor representation, which is the inversion of what? Individual ended terms x not x y not y x not x and not y or x bar and y bar these are also equivalent they produce equal outputs here all right um a simple example if we have x y z remember it applies to more than two terms x y z all in the complemented or not x, y, z, it will be exactly not x or not y or not z, like this. If this one is easier for you, take it. If this one is easier for you, take it. Whatever helps you in analysis or implementation, take whichever helps you. Why? Because we may shuffle them up based on our own design or our own need. Uh, how about the other way around? X or Y or Z all implemented uh, or complemented. In that case, uh, what we need to do is it would be individual inversion of these with and in between or ended complementation of these variables X bar and Y bar and Z bar like this. Take whatever helps you in your analysis. How do I know? We will take examples soon enough so that you will uh, practice. Now, if we apply the Morgan's theorem to simplify, now look at first, we have the whole complementation and we have ended, here we have end, right? Uh, terms. It, it, assume that this is x, the whole parenthesis here x, and this is y, okay? So in order for you to simplify it, you need to take the individual x, y complementation with or in between. Meaning what? x bar, x bar will be a, b or c all bar, like this. Or, according to De Morgan's theorem, y bar, which is a or b, c all bar. Again, apply the same concept. We have or terms, which are complemented. So it will be the individual variables, the complementation of individual variables with and in between, a, b, the complementation of a, b, and c bar, okay? And here again, the complementation of a and b, c, all complemented. Now you can just distribute. Again, the same concept, these are and terms, it would be or terms, okay? These are and the terms, there will be or terms with their complementation, of course. And you can distribute if you want, then you can simplify the best you can. Why? Because we have here, look, a bar, c bar. Here we have a bar, c bar. It will be one of them. But for the time being, this is enough. All right. Standard forms. Now, this is the last part of this, uh, or the last portion of this part. 
last few slides. Now, in order for us to create or implement a logic circuit from a truth table, we need to have or we need to understand one concept. Now, either we have to go for product terms or the sum of product terms, SOP, or we have to go for the sum of either, sorry, either the sum of product terms or the product of some terms. All right. Now we are familiar with the product uh, sum of products, SOP, the sum of products. We have and the terms which are all ORD or summed at the end. How about the uh, OR terms which are ended at the end? We will take them, no problem. For the SOP, we have OR used to logically actually sum up all the ended terms. For POS, we have an AND that's used to logically multiply all OR terms. Now, based on those, how can we apply it for a truth table? We have to go for one of these two, either minimum terms or min terms or maximum terms or max terms. For minimum terms, we have minimum number of ones. We minimize ones. That means we will have only one each time, possibly only one each time in the, tr in the truth table for the ultimate uh, representation. What am I saying? Hold, your, hold on your patience. I'll show you uh, graphically. For the maximum terms, for the maximum terms, we maximize actually the number of ones and minimize the number of zeros. So we are looking for zeros each time, just one case, one. So what am I saying? Now look, this is the maximum, this is the minimum term or min term. Min term means what? Minimum number of ones. We consider only one state will be one at a time, not all these M's. These are the states, available states. M0, M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, six, seven, y. Now look, if we have three variables, two to power three, that's eight. Eight means eight different states. So these are eight different states. We refer to this by M0, the first state, M1, second state, M2, until M7, the last state, which is the, eight, the eighth state, okay? Now, in order for us to minimize the ones, that means all these M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, and M7 will be all zeros except for M0 will be one. How do I produce it? Now look, now for us to cover all possibilities, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, that means 0, 1, 0, 1, go one zero one one at a time okay now look at this product of terms product of terms and what makes this one one it makes it x bar and y bar and z bar okay great this is the product term this makes m zero one correct how about m one now look x bar y bar z bar x bar is one here also y bar is one here also yes but how about z bar is zero so this one would be zero this is what we refer to by zero how about m2 x bar is one fine y bar is zero that means this is also zero if you apply to all of them you will find m1 is zero m2 is zero m3 is zero 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 all of them zero the way i did only one case m zero will be one that's it take the second state the second state will be x bar and y bar and z okay that will produce only one where in m1 the rest of all m's will be zeros you don't believe me? Let's try here. X bar is one, fine. Y bar is one, fine. Z bar, sorry, Z, here Z, not Z bar, Z is zero. One and one and zero is zero. Try with this. One and zero 
and zero is zero. So if you try, you will get only one state as one at a time. This one is M0, one. This one is M1, M2, M3, and so on. How do we know these states? Based on the states of the variables. Look at this, one, zero, zero, X, Y bar, Z bar. That gets you M4. How about M5? X, Y bar, Z. How do I know? X is in its state, it's not inverted, one. Y is inverted, it would be Y bar. What makes Y1 invert zero? It will be one. So Y bar, zero, uh, Z in its own uninverted and uncomplemented state, that's one. So X, Y bar, Z. The last one would be X, Y, Z, and that's it. It would be just M7. And we have this secondary diagonal, all ones, the rest are all zeros, and this is what we call min terms, the minimum number of ones. If you couldn't understand the maximum number of ones, now look at this, this representation. What we need to do for the maximum number of ones, we need to get zero instead of one here, we need to get zero for each case only once. And then we maximize the number of ones, max terms. We maximize the number of ones. All ones here, we minimize the number of ones. Okay, we maximize the number of ones. We have minimum number of zeros and a zero for each case, only ones. And in this case, what gets me zero when we have X, Y, Z as variables summed up or ORD. What gets me an ORD variable 0x or y or z, what gets you 0 is when they are all zeros. 0 or 0 or 0 gets you 0. That's 0, fine. How about this one? 0 or 0 gets you 0. But how about OR1? It doesn't. You need to invert this. So x or y or not z, not z. Okay, take the third term. X is fine, or not Y, or Z. Why not Y? We are looking for zero. X or not Y, or Z. X or not Y, or not Z. Not X or Y, or Z. Not X or Y, or not Z. And so on. So these are the maximum terms. For the maximum terms, we can also implement uh, the product of sums. We sum up these terms, then we take their products. Here we take the product, then we sum them up. Right? Of course, we speak about Boolean summation or and Boolean uh, multiplication and. All right? So we explain about these details. We explain about all the theoretical background here. How can I compose the output? The output, a function. Function of what? X, Y, Z, or A, B, C. These are the variables of our, my input. These are all possibilities. So the output could be of anything, okay? Could be of anything, but if it is given, in order for you to get it by minimum terms, you need to highlight ones, okay? Highlight these ones. Take the sum of their products. How? Now, what produces one in the final uh, function here? F, X bar, and Y bar, and Z bar. Put it. This is the first term. How about this one? Look at this state. This is M0, remember? This is M1. This is M2. X bar, and Y, and Z bar. Okay? Take this one, X and Y bar and Z. We explain about this. Okay, the last one here, X and Y and Z, and that's it. That's M0, M2. How do I know it's M0? The first state, we don't say M1, we say M0. Remember this. 
M0, M1, M2, M3, M4, 5, 6, 7. Sometimes we say this is directly, we say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 until we reach 7, from 0 to 7. So it's possible. Either we say directly by the subscript, we say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It, it, it doesn't matter. Or we say uh, M0, M1, M2, whatever. So here we have M0, M2, M5, M7. And this is represented by summation of, why summation? Summation, Boolean summation of product terms of M's. The lowercase m refers to the minimum terms or the product of these terms, the minimum terms, all right? So you may find it with no m, just the summation of 0, 2, 5, and 7. Is possible this is possible you may find it with M that's also fine or you may find it with a state M0 and 2 and 5 and 7 it's possible or all are possible you may find XYZ ABC it doesn't matter it's just variable variable name can change all right so this stands for the summation so we have or or terms here how about if I want to get it from F bar the complementation of f. The complementation of f here, zero would be uh, one would be zero, zero would be one, one would be zero, and so on. So you mark those and you try to get the output. You can do that, but instead of doing this, actually, what we can do instead of the sum of terms, because we have to complement it after all. Why? Because it's complemented here. How about if I take directly from f all right the product of terms some terms that get me zero this is possible like here what we did here we got zero here with the product of terms right uh, sorry the product of some terms let me mo be more precise i can do that or if you don't like it what you can do you take the inversion of f then you get the same you apply the same literally the same concept let's see here what will be f bar equals to what m2 plus sorry m1 plus m3 plus m4 plus m6 which is x bar y bar z or x bar y z or x y bar z bar or x y z bar like this exactly and then this is the sum of term but we have to invert it why because here we have f bar so we need to get it back to f if you invert it or take the complementation what will happen we we said we get back to the De Morgan's theorem. De Morgan's theorem is if we complement those, it will be m1 and m2. Uh, sorry, m1 bar and m3 bar and m4 bar and m6 bar. Those the complementation of m1. Remember the complementation of m1 is exactly the capital M. This is small m is exactly the capital M zero. M1, complementation of M1, the lowercase, it would be the uppercase M1. All ones here except for this one zero. Okay? That's exactly what we refer to. It's the inversion. Inversion of what? In this case, it would be the multiplication of max terms. Max terms would be the multiplication or and the end of some terms m1 remember m1 is represented by what here m1 look at this x or y or z bar x or y or z bar what gets you zero and you do this the same thing for the rest of them and, and, and this is less popular however it is possible and we apply 
uh, like our implementation with it is possible. You may be asked questions about it also. You apply the same concept either by inverting F or with F directly. F directly will take you to uh, min terms, the small n's. The inversion will take you to multiplication of the capital M's or max terms. And for min terms, we have sum of uh, products. For max terms, we have product of sums. Product of sums. Okay. Now, for the product of sums, we refer to it not by summation. We refer to it by pi. Actually, this one is pronounced in its own Greek form, P, the way word P you know. However, uh, I, I know what, what I'm saying now, pi is incorrect. However, it is the most known worldwide. I don't know why. But everywhere in the world, if you go, people pronounce it pi. Well, it, it is the word, it's pronounced P. You can even check dictionaries or ask if you have any uh, person who knows uh, Greek. You can ask. However, conventionally, I will just say pi. It is uh, the way we got used to say it, although I know it is correct and you should know also. It is pronounced P. All right. So here, product of terms, we refer to it not by summation, by sigma. We refer to it by pi of max terms. Max terms here, you can refer to the state 1, 2, 3, but remember, this is not summation. This is product of some terms, not sum of product terms. That's the, this is the end of this uh, part, and uh, I'll try to create actually a tutorial. I couldn't create the previous uh, weeks properly, but starting from now, we have to start for real tutorial uh, of this using multi-sim, or, and also not or, and uh, some sketches, some uh, sketching some problems or solving some problems. Till then, have a good time. Goodbye.